Welcome back. So, in the uh, last lecture, we have seen that how to classify the coarse grain soil and how basically you will be getting the different notations or different say symbols for different types of coarse grain soil. Now, still we will continue with the coarse grain soil. So, as we have seen in the last lecture that if the fine uh, contents uh, is less than 5 percent, that means if the material whatever I mean if you have got some soil sample and whatever is passing through 75 micron if that is in, in the coarse grain sample, if that is less than 5 percent then you need to concentrate more on the gradation characteristics of the coarse grain soil. And based on that you have got G w or S w similarly G p or S p. Now, if the soil is coarse grained obtain the G s d curve from a sieve analysis that is very true. If 50 percent or more of the coarse fraction that is 75 uh, that is passing through. So, uh, already we have seen in the last lecture, but still we will continue this thing to get the continuity. So, uh, obtain the GSD curve from a sieve analysis if 50 percent or more of the coarse fraction that is uh, greater than 75 micron is retained on the 4.75 millimeter sieve classify the soil as gravel if not classify it as sand as we uh, decided last time. If the soil fraction passing through the 75 micron sieve is less than 5 percent, determine the gradation of the soil by calculating C u and C c from the G s d curve, because at that time the gradation will be the predominating factor to uh, define the classification. If oil graded classify the soil as G w or S w, if poorly graded classify the uh, soil as G p or S p. Now, if the soil is coarse grained, now we are earlier we have seen if the fine contents is less than 5 percent. Now, if more than 12 percent passes through the 75 micron sieve that means, if the fine content is more than 12 percent perform because at that time the fine will be also participating in the classification or in determining the property of the soil. So, perform the liquid limit and plastic limit tests on the soil fraction passing through the 0.425 millimeter sieve that is 425 micron sieve. Use the IS plasticity chart to determine the classification. So, you, you have three categories one is your in the coarse grain soil sample there are three categories one is that the fine contents is less than 5 percent, one is the fine contents is more than 12 percent and one is in between 5 percent and 12 percent. So, now we are dealing with more than 12 percent. So, if your fine content in the coarse grain soil is more than 12 percent, then basically the fine content will uh, try to participate in the property determination of the coarse grain soil. That means, you may get some plasticity or you may get some kind of uh, coarse uh, fine grain soil property. So, so, you need to perform the liquid limit as, as well as the plastic limit test and you need to go back to the IS plasticity chart to determine the uh, soil symbol. So, and the symbol could be G m or S m or G c or A c. Here actually your gradation is not coming to the picture, please try to understand if the fine content is more than 12 percent, your gradation is not the predominating factor, whereas your uh, behavior of the fine contents will be predominating factor like such that is why you have got the symbol like G m. What is G m? That is silty gravel what is S m that is silty sand, similarly G c that is clayey gravel, S c that is clayey sand or G m G c if it comes very close to a line, okay, then you will be getting the dual symbol G m G c. So, it could be uh, silty gravel or clayey gravel okay, or S m S c again this is coming very close to a line and it could be S m or S c that is silty uh, sand or clay sand. If between 5 percent and 12 percent passes through the 75 micron sieve, that means if the fine content is between 5 percent and 12 percent, then 
the soil is assigned a dual symbol appropriate to its gradation and plasticity characteristics. Then you have to see both gradation as well as plasticity characteristics. That means, the gradation alone will not uh, dominating the uh, classification process or plasticity alone will not dominate the classification process. So, you will be getting the dual symbol for the crotch grain soil that could be G w G m that means, oil graded gravel and uh, silty gravel. Similarly, G w G c, G p G c, G p G m, S w S m, S w S c, S p S c, S p S m. So, these are the possible dual symbols for coarse grain soil. Okay. Now, coming to the fine grain soil, if the soil is fine grained and of course, we are dealing with inorganic, we are not dealing with organic, because organic uh, soil if you have. So, at the very first instance we take it out, because when we classify the soil as organic or fine or coarse, at that time the organic soil is a different uh, category right? and we take it out. So, that whenever we are dealing with fine grained or coarse grained, they are all inorganic. So, if the soil is fine grained inorganic of course, determine the liquid limit and plastic limit on the 425 micron down sieve uh, fraction and determine the plasticity index. So, you do you perform the liquid limit test and plastic limit test to obtain the liquid limit and plastic limit and obtain the magnitude of plasticity index and then if the limits plot below. Uh, the A line, then classify as silt as we have seen, we have discussed enough on the plasticity chart. Further, if liquid limit is less than 35, classify as ML low plastic silt. If liquid limit is between 35 and 50, classify as MI that is intermediate plastic silt. If liquid limit is greater than 50, the classify as MH that is high plastic silt. Now, if the limits plot above the A line, then what will happen? It will be clay, it will be classified as clay. So, classify as clay, assign the group symbol as C L or C I or C H depending on the value of liquid limit, whether it is uh, below 35 percent or it is in between 35 and 50 percent or above 50 percent. Based on that, you will be getting C L or C I or C H as discussed before for the uh, silt. If the limits plot in the hash zone in the plasticity chart, already we have seen classify the soil as CLML. So, it will be getting the dual symbol, already we have discussed this thing. If the limits plot close to a line or close to liquid limit equal to 35 percent or liquid limit equal to 50 percent lines, assign dual symbols as outlined earlier. If the soil is of organic origin, so, now we are coming to the organic soil. So, if the soil is of organic origin, the plasticity chart is used after determining liquid limit and plastic limit and the soil classified as OL. If it is low plastic organic soil, then it is OL. If it is intermediate plastic organic soil, then it is OI or OH. Right? So, if you get the organic soil, you simply perform the liquid limit and plastic limit test and you obtain liquid limit and plastic limit and then you find out the plasticity index, you go back to the IS plasticity chart and there you see where it is coming, whether it is below 35 percent, whether the liquid limit is below 35 percent or uh, uh, between 35 and 50 percent or above 30, 50 percent based on that you classify OL, OI or OH. If the soil has about 50 percent each of fines and coarse grained fractions. So, basically uh, we have discussed that if the percentage retained on 75 micron is more than 50 percent, then it is coarse grained soil. If it is if the pass percentage finer than 75 micron is more than 50 percent, then it is fine grained soil. Now, if it is 50 50 like 50 percent uh, retained uh, 50 percent is coarse grain, 50 percent is fine grain, then what will happen? Then determine whether the coarse grain fraction is gravel or sand. So, you you take whatever is retained on 75 micron sieve and then based on that you do the you perform the sieve analysis again which is retained on 4.75 millimeter or uh, below 4.75 millimeter and based on that you classify that as gravel or sand. 
determine liquid limit and plastic limit on the 0.425 that is 425 micron sieve down fraction depending on whether the limits plot above or below the A line classify as C or M based on liquid limit classify as L, I or H whether it is less than 35 percent above 50 percent or between 35 and 50 percent based on that you give the symbol L, I or H. Assign the dual symbol from the information obtained in previous steps as for example, G M M L that means, silty gravel and low plastic uh, silts. So, similarly G M M I something like that. Now, coming to the soil structure and clay mineralogy. So, if you understand this thing then you will be knowing or you will be uh, really appreciating that why you are getting the plasticity in the fine grain soil why not in the coarse grain soil and why the coarse grain soil is basically determined or basically uh, classified based on the gradation, why the gradation is very important for the coarse grain whereas, the other things is uh, basically uh, governing the property of the fine grain soil. Now, in case of coarse grain soils, the mineralogical composition of the grains hardly affects the engineering properties of soil. So, if you take the gravel, if you take the sand, then those type of soils basically those are the coarse grain soil. So, mineralogical composition of those type of soils are not very much predominant to determine or to affect the engineering properties of that particular type of soil, whether it is gravel or sand. But finer the particles, the forces associated with the surface area of the grains become more significant. Because uh, if you if you consider the fine particles, because clay seals these these particles you cannot see uh, by your uh, bare eyes. Okay. So, if the uh, fine are the particles, so if you if you going to uh, from seal to clay it will be more finer. So, if but finer the particles the forces associated with the surface area because then it will be uh, kind it will be a kind of plate and on top of the plate you will be having uh, I mean if you consider the surface area of the plate then those plates basically uh, uh, those surface area of the uh, gains become more significant. Soil structure means the mode of arrangement of soil particles related to each other and the forces acting between them to hold them in their positions. So, basically soil structure when we are talking about it basically tells that how the soil particles are getting arranged in a matrix in a in a soil matrix and uh, the forces acting between them. So, how, I mean what are the forces basically will try to attract the soil particles or so that uh, the whole domain if we see globally this is my soil uh, domain or the soil matrix. So, how they are getting formed. So, this basically the forces acting between them to hold them in their position. So, these are the things we will talk about or will be covered in soil structure uh, determination. In coarse grain soils the force due to gravity is the main factor to govern the formation of soil structure. It is very I mean simple. Suppose, if you take the sand sample and if you uh, draw from different heights of the uh, I mean if you so if you take a container and in the container you are filling the sand from different heights you will be seeing that the soil structure or the packing of the sand will be different. Because the force due to gravity is the main culprit or the main governing factor which will define the soil structure. But in fine grain soils the surface bonding forces become predominant okay? because you have the surface area it will be like a plate or platelet kind of thing and the surface bonding forces will be the predominant factor and the specific surface ratio of I mean specific surface which is nothing but the ratio of the surface area of material to its mass or volume is a parameter which is often used to decide the importance of surface bonding forces related to forces due to gravity. So, in case of fine grain soil forces due to gravity is not the predominant factor whereas, your surface bonding forces will cause or will make or will alter the packing or alter the soil structure. 
the grains of clay soil are predominantly composed of clay minerals, because if you see this, this thing can be seen in some uh, electron microscope that the clay grains or the clay soil grains are predominantly composed of clay minerals. So, there, there are different minerals available and there, those particles or those uh, say grains are made of those clay minerals, which has plasticity and cohesion. So, now you have understood that why the clay soil, clay soil or the fine grain soil is giving me the plasticity, because of its clay minerals. Clay minerals are very active electrochemically and the presence of even a small amount of clay minerals can appreciably alter the engineering properties of a soil mass. Okay. So, clay mineral is very, very important factor to determine or to define the engineering properties of your fine grain soil. Now, coming to the clay minerals. Now, the clay materials are basically composed of tiny crystalline substances of one or more members of a small group of materials commonly known as clay minerals. So, they are known as I mean, I mean this is a definition actual definition of clay minerals. The clay materials are basically composed of tiny crystalline substances of one or more members of a small group of minerals commonly known as clay minerals. Now, these clay minerals are evolved mainly from the chemical weathering of certain rock forming minerals and already we have seen in the very first class that what is our chemical weathering. So, from the chemical weathering of the rock you will be getting or basically your soil is getting formed and if it is if you consider the clay type of soil. So, clay minerals are nothing but uh, the outcome of the weathering process of rock. The clay minerals on the basis of their crystalline arrangement can be divided into three main groups. So, how they are oriented, how their crystalline structure is there. So, based on that there are mainly three groups. First one is kaolin group, second one is Montmorillonite group and third one is elite group and we will be discussing these groups uh, separately. Structure of clay minerals. The atomic structure of clay minerals are built of two fundamental crystal sheets. So, if I mean whatever clay minerals you have seen kaolinite, kaolin or Montmorillonite or elite. So, the atomic structure of the clay minerals are built of two fundamental crystal sheets. I mean not more than that two fundamental crystal sheets. One is tetrahedral or silica sheet, another one is octahedral or alumina sheet. Now, what are these sheets? It is only the mode of stacking of these sheets that means, how they are getting stacked this, this, these sheets, because one after another these sheets will be stacked and then based on that you will be getting different clay minerals. Okay. So, this is the basic unit of the clay mineral that is tetrahedral or silica sheet or octahedral or alumina sheet. Now, it is only the mode of stacking of these sheets, the nature of bonding forces and the different metallic ions in the crystal lattice that go to make different clay minerals. So, what are the things will cause different clay minerals from this crystal, crystal sheets? First one is the stacking of these sheets, how they are getting stacked, the nature of bonding forces, that means what type of bonding forces is there, whether it is hydrogen bond or whether it is van der Waal bond something like that based on that. And the different metallic ions in the crystal lattice. So, I mean in that crystal lattice what are the different ions are present. So, based on that you will be getting different clay minerals like kaolin or montmorillonite or elite. So, we will see that. Now, tetrahedral or silica sheet how they look like and what are these sheets. The tetrahedral sheet is a result of combining silica tetrahedral units, which consist of four oxygen atoms placed at the tip of tetrahedron enclosing a silicon atom. So, if you look at this figure, so basically this, this, is, this is the typical figure of your uh, tetrahedron. So, this is the tetrahedron, you have four oxygen atoms, first one, second one, third one and fourth one and you have only one silicon atom inside. Okay. So, which consists of four oxygen atoms 
placed at the tips of the tetrahedron enclosing a silicon atom. So, that will uh, form the basic unit of the clay minerals that is basically known as tetrahedron unit or silica sheet because it contains silicon inside. So, it is known as silicon sheet and they will be getting stacked. So, if you consider only the tetrahedral sheets, so they will be getting stacked by this way. Okay. Now, coming to the octahedral or alumina sheet. The octahedral sheet is a combination of octahedral units, we will see that. So, this is a combination of octahedral units which consists of 6 hydroxyl ions at the tips of an octahedron enclosing an aluminum or magnesium or some other metallic atom. Okay. So, at the tips you have 6 hydroxyl ions whereas, inside you have aluminum or magnesium or some other metallic atom. Now, if the atom at the center is aluminum, okay, the resulting sheet is known as Gibbs side sheet and if the magnesium is in the central atom, then the sheet is called as brucite sheet. So, if I say the Gibbs side sheet that means, this is the uh, octahedral sheet or the alumina sheet uh, which contains the aluminum inside. If I say the brucite sheet that means, this sheet will consider or will contain the magnesium inside. Now, this is the complete picture of the octahedral sheet. So, if you look at this, this is your octahedral sheet. So, this is the octahedron and at the tips you have 6 hydroxyl ions 3, 4, 5 and 6 and 1 inside aluminum ion. Okay. It could be aluminum, it could be magnesium or it could be any other metallic ion based on that you will be getting different names. If it is aluminum then it is gibbsite, if it is magnesium then it will be brucite and they will be stacked or they will be connected to each other in this fashion. Okay. Now, coming to what is known as isomorphous substitution, because you need to know little bit of uh, chemistry to understand these things. So, frequently in a clay mineral lattice, metallic ions of one kind may be substituted by other metallic ions of lower valence, but of the same physical size. Such a substitution is called isomorphous substitution and may lead to different clay minerals with different physical properties. For example, one silicon ion in a tetrahedral unit may be substituted by an aluminum ion. So, this kind of substitution is possible and because of this substitution you will be getting the main sheet is remaining same, but because of this kind of substitution you will be getting different properties in the clay mineral. Now, coming to the clay minerals, now kaolinite, this comes under kaolin group. So, the kaolinite structural unit consists of alternating layers of silica tetrahedra with the tips embedded in an alumina that is gibbsite octahedral unit. Now, if you look at this, so this is the uh, this is a kind of uh, say symbolic expression that means, there is one silica sheet, another one is the gibbsite that is the alumina sheet and they are getting stacked together and and then and be, this is the alternating arrangement basically. So, you get this uh, kind of block and then another unit will be this and then they will be stacked together it will form the kaolinite group. So, you have the basic sheet is this gibbsite and silica sheet these are your basic sheets. Now, these basic sheets are getting stacked together and in the alternating arrangement and they will be forming the kaolinite structural unit. So, now this is uh, the symbolic expression whereas, in the actual if you see uh, the uh, how they are getting formed. So, basically on top of that you, you this is your octahedral uh, unit and on top you have the silica unit. So, uh, then this silica unit is having the silicon inside and this is having aluminum inside and they are getting stacked together and they will form the kaolinite structural unit. The resulting layer is about 7.2 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter thick because as we have seen just now we have seen you see this is the resulting this is the resulting unit. So, this resulting unit the thickness the thickness of the resulting unit is 7.2 angstrom which is nothing but 7.2 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. 
and extends indefinitely in the other two dimensions. So, in other two dimensions it will be extending one by one unit will be stacked together and it will be continuing in other two dimensions. The structural units are held together by hydrogen bonds okay, between the hydroxyl of the octahedral sheet and the oxygens of the tetrahedral sheet. So, basically this bonding in between these two thing your bonding is basically happening because of your hydrogen bond. Okay. And this hydrogen bond is very very strong this hydrogen bond is basically form getting formed between the hydroxyls of the octahedral sheet and the oxygens of the tetrahedral sheet. The bonding with hydrogen bond results in considerable strength as you know hydrogen bond is very very strong. So, it, it results in considerable strength and stability with little tendency in the interlayers to allow water and to soil. That means, the hydrogen bond is so strong, the hydrogen bond is so strong and it will not allow any water to come inside in the interlayer. So, that I mean if water, water is getting inside then you will be getting some volume increase of the soiling. So, that is not happening at all because the this water is not able to break this hydrogen bond and go inside the interlayers. So, it is very very strong and stable bond. So, that will not allow water and that is why the kaolinite is generally very very less active and very very less uh, I mean uh, it will not be showing the soiling property or the sinkage property. The kaolinite is thus the least active among the clay minerals and has a thickness between 500 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter and 1000 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So, we within this range basically the thickness of the clay minerals lie. So, thank you very much. So, we will be seeing in the next class that is monpronite, elite and other things and then we will be taking one numerical example to understand the soil classification system. Thank you.